Hello, everyone. Today on The Final Bar, I'm joined by Louis Giannis, founder of WealthNet Investments, joining us from Colorado to share with us some of the charts top of mind for him. Overall, the market continues to be in sort of a digestion phase, what we might call a distribution today. Gapping up, sort of opening higher, but dribbling lower through the course of the day. The S&P, S&P finishing down around 4440. We'll talk about the pullback there, the lead, leadership to the downside from financials and energy. Nice bouncing cryptos, ladies and gentlemen. This is the final bar. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's edition of The Final Bar. I'm your host, Dave Keller. I'm the chief market strategist here at StockCharts.com in a sunny Redmond, Washington. Thanks for joining us every weekday after the close as we focus on the activity of the markets. We focus on the message the markets can provide back to us. As I've mentioned many times historically, I was taught 20 plus years ago that the markets were driven by fear and greed. And I think at some point, Since I started looking at charts, the markets have evolved to be driven 100% by fear. On the upside, it's fear of missing out, the FOMO, the fear of missing out on the next big thing that goes to the moon. On the downside, it's the fear of losing everything. It's the fear of uh, of a repeat of some of those previous significant losses. And even though the market's 3 4% at most down from all-time highs last week, it certainly feels like distribution uh, taking hold. You can think about the potential for downside here. At the end of the day, it's not about worrying about what could happen or what should happen. It's focusing on what is happening. And as we've talked about many times, it's about having a good discipline process for understanding the dynamics and defining your risk at the uh, as much as you can. We have some great guests on the show. I'm excited to talk to uh, Louis Giannis here in a few moments. Coming up this week on Thursday, we have Frank Capillary from Instanet coming from uh, New York. Next week, we have Tony Zhang, uh, the chief options strategist at Options Play. Coming up Wednesday, the 22nd, we have uh, Jay Pittet from, uh, excuse me, Jay Pettit from Charts Avenue. And then coming up on the 23rd, we have Katie Stockton, the founder of Fairlead Strategies in Connecticut. Also, as a reminder, the TSAA, the Technical Security Analyst Association of San Francisco, they're doing their annual conference virtual format coming up this Saturday on September 18th. Stock Charts is very proud to sponsor that great event featuring some fantastic speakers, many of which we've had on the show. Ari Wald from Oppenheimer, Craig Johnson from Piper Sandler, Alessio Rutigliano. We unfortunately had to schedule from this week, but we're going to get him back on the show very soon. Uh, Chris Kimball uh, from uh, Kimball Charting Solutions should be a really good event. I'd encourage you to go to TSAASF.org to find more information about their uh, annual conference coming up this Saturday, the 18th. Let's continue on with today's market recap. We're going to start with a poll. We always have a poll running on our live stream page on stockcharts.com. Also on social media, we try to send them out as much as we can. Recently, we asked, know your technical indicators, which indicator does not imply price direction, but simply measures the strength of the underlying trend. This is maybe this may be the closest I've gotten to stumping Final Bar Nation because I got about half of you uh, to pick one of the other answers. 48% of you correctly answered ADX, which stands for the Average Directional Movement. That is literally measuring the strength of the trend. That's derived from the DMI, the Directional Movement Indexes that uh, Wells Wilder created. He's the same person that created RSI, the parabolic systems, which are also on the uh, on the list of, uh, of responses. But the ADX really doesn't tell you direction. The higher the ADX, the stronger the trend. You have to use other indicators like DMI or something else to understand the direction, whether it's a, an uptrend or a downtrend. RSI absolutely uh, measures trend, although it does also measure the strength, but it also implies in trend direction. The higher RSI, the stronger it's going to the upside. Relative strength certainly measures uh, um, uh, price direction because it's showing you how a stock or an ETF is doing relative to other names. And then the parabolic SAR is actually a stop loss system based purely on the direction of the uh, of the trend. If you're not familiar with some of those technical indicators, they all could be valuable parts of your process. Go to the chart school tab on stockcharts.com. You can learn more about all of them and hopefully uh, add the right stuff to, uh, to your uh, decision-making process. Let's continue on with today's market recap. We talked last week and into uh, into yesterday about the sort of digestion phase of the market. Think of the last couple of weeks as being that big meal. And then you need to have time to digest what you ate and sort of 
get through that uh, th that next period. It's starting to transition a little bit from a digestion phase to a bit of a distribution phase, particularly in the short term, where you're seeing some weakness, uh, broadly speaking. And, uh, and it's not just a narrow group of stocks. It's sort of everything, especially on a day like today, all 11 S&P sectors finished in the red. The S&P 500 finishing down over half a percent, just above 44.40. The Nasdaq composite uh, a little bit under that, so technology actually outperformed the S and P today, and so the Nasdaq uh, still uh, down, but down about a third of a percent for the Nasdaq 100. Mid caps and small caps leading the way lower, and financials and energy, uh, the cyclical sectors, industrials, materials were all the uh, at the bottom of the return list, which means small cap index, which is a little more weighted to some of those sectors, is gonna is gonna struggle on a day like today for sure. The VIX, by the way, is at, is back up uh, just above 1950 at the close today. Other asset classes, very quickly, interest rates coming off today, a bit of a flight to safety with uh, with uh, Treasury bonds going higher and uh, TNX, dollar sign TNX, which is the 10-year yield index, uh, down just below 128. Commodities overall mixed to a degree, but gold and silver actually higher. Oil prices a little bit lower. And as I mentioned, energy was the worst sector out of the 11 uh, today overall. But uh, gold prices really have been in a choppy, a choppy environment. Uh, it's been uh, you know, overall, I think the trend still nets out to a negative, but days like today where we're finishing uh, stronger and pushing higher through the course of the day are encouraging. Bitcoin actually pushing higher through the course of the last 24 hours since we recorded uh, yesterday's show. We're going to go there uh, here in a moment. We're going to look at the S&P 500 first, but Bitcoin is really bouncing off of that key support range around 42 to 44,000. We talked about that level many, many times, and it's once again coming back into play. So putting things in a proper context, when I talk about the digestion phase, talk about distribution, let's remember that this is still within a short term time frame. Um, you know, I was taught by an early mentor, all large losses begin as small losses. So it's OK to have some of these pullbacks. What's not OK is to is to hold on to things when they continue to push to the downside. Um, you know, one of the. Uh, um, uh, challenges are one of the things that uh, we often talked about was it's okay to be wrong. It's not okay to stay wrong. And staying in a position that's not working can be very detrimental. But at this point, I think the S&P is still within the realm of a very reasonable pullback. Now, I can give you many, many reasons why the S&P should go materially lower than here. I can tell you the narratives that would cause that further downside uh, potential. Uh, but to be clear, we haven't seen the trigger yet, right? And we talked in recent days and weeks about the four-step process I would be looking for to, uh, you know, to confirm that the uptrend is over. Step one, we need to make a lower high. We'd have to attempt to make new all-time highs and fail to do so. We have not failed to do so literally every month so far year to date. Every month we have made a new all-time high. We've been able to achieve that. One of these months we will be unable to achieve a new high, and that might start to suggest that things are changing a little bit. Step two, which we're actually very close to doing today, but we didn't quite get there, was uh, breaking below the 50-day moving average. We've break, broken below it a number of times. We've not closed below it two consecutive days uh, since last uh, October, actually, last November, really. So watching a close and then a follow through below the 50 day moving average would tell you that uptrend is really starting to reverse and that the uptrend has exhausted. Step three, breaking below the swing low from mid-August. We'd have to undercut that low, in my opinion, below 43.60. That would make, uh, you know, then we have a lower high and a lower low. Finally, and this is an interesting one, is the RSI would need to get below 40. Now, as things were selling off through the course of the afternoon, the RSI is getting closer and closer to that 40 level. If you look back through uh, you know, 2021, you can see we came down into the 40s, one, two, three, four, five, six times. Every one of those times, that's been the viable dips before we revert back higher. Most of those times are when we've hit the 50-day moving average and when we've turned back to the upside. We're nearing, once again, the 50-day moving average. We're nearing the RSI level of 40. This would be the time reasonably, uh, reasonable expectation would be that we bounce once again like we have many times. But as Greg Morris, one of our uh, fellow stock charts contributors for years and years has mentioned, uh, all new highs are bullish except for the last one or something I'm paraphrasing right there, meaning all new highs are good except the very last one, which ends up being the final new high, ends up being the perfect time to sell. And I think the way that you validate that that high was it was when you start breaking down and, and signal a rotation to distribution. At this point, we're still within the normal pullbacks that we've seen before. Those are the four things I would look for that would tell me that this is something different. We're going up uh, potentially much lower.
We talked about Bitcoin and just get, get back to this chart here because it's certainly one that's been uh, followed very widely and I think for good reason. You know, we talked about the importance of the 42 to 44,000 uh, range, right? And this is this pink shaded area. This really started, this is one of the first things we talked about back here in January and February because this is where we topped out in January when we first broke 40,000 for the first time. We came back down, then we broke above it and came back and tested this range. From there, that range has served uh, as support a number of times. It's also a 38.2% retracement from the low around 10,000 uh, back here, uh, just before the left side of the chart. The peak that we had in April, that's 38.2% of the way. And you can see that these Fibonacci levels have actually been fairly meaningful for uh, Bitcoin. We've bounced off of that a number of times, number of times and 44,000 actually uh, continues to be important. I didn't write this short-term one, but uh, a peer of mine actually posted a great chart that showed that the July low to the September high, we're also 38.2% of the way retracing that amount. So 44,000, certainly an important line in the sand, continues to be validated with yesterday's uh, low, getting just below that and recent uh, lows as well. So I think remaining above that is key to this bullish thesis for Bitcoin. If we break below 44,000, for me, 42,000 is the next support. That's really that range that I would be looking for. And then below there, you really have to start questioning the long-term uh, uptrend there. Wanted to very quickly just finish off our market recap just by talking briefly about breadth conditions. So we don't have all of these updated through the close just yet. But the uh, you know one of the things that turned me a little more positive here about a week ago is the fact that these cumulative advanced decline lines actually broke to new swing highs. So the common stock only AD line, the mid cap AD line all broke above their August highs. That actually has uh, has has pulled back now. They've came off of those new highs and they're back in the middle of the range here. Certainly something to watch to see if we break down to new swing lows on those AD lines. We'll get some other uh, breadth indicators a little later in today's show. We need to take a quick break. We'll be back with my guest, Louis Giannis. We'll see you in a minute. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Final Bar. This is Dave Keller here at StockCharts.com. It's so good to have you join us every weekday after the close as we focus on the message of the markets, focus on price, trend, momentum, breadth, sentiment, all those tools that help us understand the uh, market dynamics and investor psychology. A couple quick announcements before we get to today's guest, Louis Giannis. First off, questions are very, very welcome. We're going to do another mailbag segment shortly uh, in today's show. We'd love to answer one of your questions in our next mailbag segment on Friday's show. You can get your questions to us one of three ways via email, the final bar at stockcharts.com, via Twitter at final bar SCTV on our YouTube channel called Stock Charts. Just bring up one of the videos that you're watching, put a comment right below the video. We'd love to hear from you questions about market uh, dynamics, technical indicators, about stock charts, whatever it is. We're here to help uh, point you in the right direction. We'll hope to answer your question on Friday's show. Also, go to StockChartsTV.com. You can use your email address, set up a free account, start watching all of our great content from all of your mobile devices and our website. Great uh, guests, thoughtful uh, expert guests like uh, Louis Giannis, uh, special events like The Pitch and our Mid-Year Market Outlook, and uh, all sorts of uh, other great shows from our wonderful suite of hosts. Go to StockChartsTV.com or uh, search on any of the app stores for Stock Charts TV On Demand. I want to welcome on today's uh, guest, Louis Giannis. Louis is the founder of WealthNet Investments, joining us from Colorado. Uh, Louis, I know you have a new podcast coming up called The Market Call, uh, coming up here yes. very soon, and uh, and certainly good luck with that. But thank you for joining us here today. It's really good. I'm happy to be, be back with you. So it's a it's a pleasure, Louis. So you know, certainly we've been describing this market as sort of a digestion phase here in the last couple of weeks. Obviously, you know, coming off of new all time highs. But now starting to show some, you know, potential concerns as we've seen about a week or so of, uh, of distribution. You're starting us with a table looking at actually some key fundamental factors, how you're thinking of the equity landscape. What are you seeing here? Well, really what this table shows is we've got some proprietary uh, fundamental factors that we calculate. 
And that's just a fancy way of saying we like to group stocks by the types of fundamentals they're showing. And what we've been noticing for a long time is that companies that have strong earnings revisions and strong uh, revenue revisions upward have been really being rewarded. And companies that have high dividends and high quality have really been shunned. So your traditional value type companies, as we, you know, we've been talking about this for quite some time, but high return on capital and high uh, earnings and revenue revisions has been really the, the story right now. And But what's happened is, is all these stocks have gone up so much now that they're, all, they're starting to show signs of sluggishness, like you said, like digestion or mm. uh, near equilibrium, you, you might also call it. So what we're doing is we're straddling, we're taking money off the table for those companies that are just really gone up a lot and we're starting to rotate even more so and we're, we're really straddling high quality, uh, high dividend type stocks that have been ignored that also are still growing. And then uh, mixing that with younger growers that have something new and dynamic going on, like like recent IPOs and things like that. It's very, very interesting. And I like that straddle approach, sort of thinking about the two different buckets. You brought a couple names with us. First off is Hartford Financial Services, HIG. Yeah, you know, uh, the financials uh, sold off quite a bit recently. And uh, if you look at this chart here, what's interesting about Hartford, Hartford has very strong fundamentals. They, they meet all of our fundamental criteria. And the stock is set up. We're seeing a lot of these types of setups. We see them in other companies that are high quality, like Procter & Gamble also has a chart that looks very similar to this. But basically what we're seeing is little base patterns that are happening and they're starting to just kind of ease their way into new high ground. And th there's a lot of return moves. There's this concept in technical analysis called role reversal where uh, resistance becomes support. So buying interest starts happening below current levels. And I think we're at that kind of a level right now with Hartford, Hartford where you can pick it up on a mean reversion move, buying on a little bit of a pullback. It's interesting. I was, I was uh, taught early on, never confuse the top of the page with resistance. And some of these names, I think sometimes people are afraid to buy names that are breaking out, but certainly we've seen recently that that, that that doesn't stop a lot of stocks from going up materially from there. Chart number two is Snowflake, a name that I know many of Yeah, Snowflake we talked about last time I was on, and uh, you see that little uh, yellow uh, bar there. I had pointed that out. This is the same chart, but it just updated the data that we talked about last time, we uh, talked about it around 242 and it took off pretty strong, went up at well over 300. I still like the stock. It's a recent IPO, lots of good fundamentals behind it. Uh, you know, what I see right now is that it's a little bit extended and you can see that little graph where I'm thinking that maybe it could kind of pull back a little bit. And I want to point something out here. Uh, there's times when it's important to buy breakouts and follow through. And then there's times where you want to just kind of ease your way into them as they make minor pullbacks. And so I think this is a kind of environment where you want to buy minor pullbacks that, within a stronger trend with good fundamentals. I like this stock. I think it has potential to go up to the 396, all the way up even to the 514 level on a technical, just a simple measured move. And there's a tons of growth behind it. All right. Now, the next name we wanted to look at was uh, Roblox, RBLX. Talk us through this one. Well, Roblox is one of those recent IPO companies that I wanted to show as an example of younger companies that have something new and exciting going on and uh, they're, the technicals look like they're about to turn. So I talked about this actually last time I was on as well, just to kind of follow it up. And it, the stock did break out and uh, had a pretty big run, but you could see it peaked out in June and then it actually, it hit like 103 and then it just went into this basing pattern. That's a base upon base type pattern. So mm. basically you could see that it's trading in a range above the, res the prior resistance level right after the IPO. And if you look on the right hand side, you can see that there's positive uh, relative strength happening. It's starting to, you're starting to see that relative strength uh, versus the market improve and potentially break out. Now, this is a type of company that I, I believe the way to trade this from here is to actually use buy stops, not not buying on pullbacks. Maybe we were talking about, you know, sometimes you want to buy on, on a pullback and sometimes you want to buy on a follow through. This is the type of company that I want to see it break through that resistance zone to show you that it's going to continue that trend. So it's got a nice little setup. But if it does, if it does break out and see some strong volume there, the stock could move up on a measured move up to as high as maybe 130. So that's the kind of that's the kind of thing I think that we we like to straddle right now. That's what we're doing for uh, investment uh, at the moment. I love that description, Lewis, and I love you mentioned the buy stops. Basically, looking for some sort of follow through. And we always talk about 
you know, not hitting resistance is one thing, but actually following through, breaking through that level and, and showing that it deserves to be higher is what you're really waiting for. L- Lewis, listen, thank you as always for coming. It's awesome to have you on the show. Really appreciate it. We'll hope to have you uh, back. I know you have a new book coming coming out soon. I was super thrilled to be able to preview it, and I think people are really going to enjoy it. So be well, stay safe. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. That's Lewis Giannis. Lewis is the founder of WealthNet Investments coming to us from Colorado. And I love how we talked about that straddle, uh, you know, just sort of the straddling some of the different uh, approaches. It reminds me a lot of the great conversations I had with my, 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 my peers and fellow investors at Fidelity. I was thinking about what themes you were exposing to and looking for diversification of uh, patterns, diversification of approaches and making sure that you were uh, thinking through some of the potential uh, outcomes for those names given market conditions. I thought those are a couple of really good examples that Lewis talked through. We need to wrap today's show and go to the three and three, three charts in three minutes. Here we go. Chart number one is the S&P 500 with two key breadth indicators. We talked about breadth a little bit earlier, looking at the cumulative advanced decline lines, but one of the ways that we like to follow it is using uh, the percent of stocks above their moving averages. If you look, you see that in the last couple of days, you've seen the percent of stocks above their 50 day bounce right off of the 50% level. That pit per, uh, sorry, pinkish horizontal line is sort of that general back of the envelope assessment that I make. Are over half of stocks in the S&P above their 50 day or not? And when the market really starts to uh, you know, deteriorate, when things start to potentially get a little squirrely, you see the indicator get below 50%. That often precedes obviously you know, much deeper pullbacks, but also identifies some of the more uh, you know, constructive pullbacks or, or more challenging or, or choppy periods before the uptrend resumes. Either way, it tells you the conditions are changing, a bit of a change of character, and we're right off of that level. It'll be interesting to see if we break below that given the uh, distribution we saw today. Chart number two, when I think of examples of stocks that are actually trading lower, what are stocks that have rotated from an accumulation phase to a distribution phase? Kraft Heinz might be a good example of that KHC. This is a stock that was in an uptrend, making new all-time highs here in May, RSI becoming overbought, the relative strength threatening a new multi-year high, but then things started to unwind. And you can see over the next six weeks or so how all of that sort of went away. The stock, instead of being above its 50-day, broke below its 50-day moving average. Instead of making higher lows, it's making lower lows. Instead of higher highs, making lower highs, the RSI coming Coming down into the bearish phase, remaining below 60. That's the type of chart that tells me that things are rotating when I'm looking for opportunities to underweight or look for places to manage risk. A chart like that is the one that makes me question upside potential. Now, also, I would say the final chart is uh, Microsoft. And think about names on a day like today when a lot of stocks are coming off, which charts are actually holding up there. And there are a number that fit in this bucket. Uh, you know, a couple of the FANG stocks. FANG stocks are actually mixed, I think, about 50% up and down using the, the fan mag name, those six names that we've talked about. But Microsoft jumped off as uh, as one of the top, uh, top names today, uh, biggest gainer in the Dow, uh, up about 1% on a day when a lot of the uh, you know individual names were down, obviously, and, and in some ways down a fairly significant amount. Stocks that hold up when the market is selling off is always of interest to me. When you think about where people might go to get defensive, to ride out this sort of digestion phase, this potential deterioration phase, the chart is telling you a name like Microsoft is one that people are going to. Overall constructive trends above the two upward sloping moving averages, relative strength overall trending higher. RSI elevated, but not euphoric yet, not overbought and overall uh, potentially a good place to park out some of those, uh, some of those uh, market uncertain periods. That's our show for today. Special thank you to Luis Giannis joining us from uh, Colorado. Great take as always on the market environment. For StockCharts.com, I'm Dave Keller. Be well and stay safe. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.